Hey, this is Kent with SIP.us. I want to give you a uh, quick tour of configuration of a Grandstream uh, 61XX device. This is a 6102 device. Uh, on, the, on their latest firmware, which updates to asterisk 13.4 on the back end, um, and I just set this up today and got it working. So the first thing I had to do was actually create the extensions. You can see I've got one created and registered. Uh, after that, I went to the VoIP trunks, and I created my registration with SIP.us. Uh, you can use whatever you want for the provider name. The host name is going to be gw1.sip.us. Transports UDP. Uh, you can keep the trunk caller ID if you want, or you can uncheck that and uh, keep the original caller ID, whatever you'd like to do. With that, do not check NAT. That will cause all kinds of problems, even if you are NATed. This box is NATed, uh, but you notice I do not have NAT checked. Uh, tell your I can stay as disabled. Need registration is checked. We put in the trunk number from SIP.us as our username. And the password will be listed under Show Password. It's a little link in your SIP.us portal. You click on Show Password, and your password for the trunk will appear. And again, the trunk number is the auth ID. You need to go to the Advanced Settings. I get rid of all the codecs except for PCMU. And that's G711U law. I find that to be the most stable, the most robust, and it has the best DTMF uh, or the tones. When you do the, the uh, you press your digits and you get tones, it seems to convey those the best across our service. The from domain is gw1.sip.us. From user is your trunk number. Uh, eventually, you'll want to do a PAI header probably to send your caller ID, but that's a little bit beyond this. The DID mode is going to be the two header. DTMF mode is RFC 2833. We are going to enable qualify. That sends options pings to the gateway at SIP.us. And as long as the gateway responds, which it should always be responding to those, then uh, your trunk will be marked as up as long as you're registered su successfully. If you uncheck that, your trunk will be marked as unmonitored. And uh, the Grandstream would not try and figure out whether they're, whether the host, gw1.sip.us, was actually there before it sent the call. It would just try and send it always. Uh, I'm sending those options pings every 60 seconds. Uh, and you can leave this to zero. That's an unlimited number of lines. We don't need to limit it on the grand stream side particularly. And that's it as far as creating the trunk goes. Then you need to go into your outbound routes. And in here you can see I set up a few different outbound routes. This is 11-digit uh, North American dialing, I guess you could call it, where I'm going to dial 1, the area code and number, and it's not going to add anything in there. You can see that I set the security to internal. I'm not stripping anything, I'm not prepending anything, and it's going out my SIP trunk at SIP.us. Then I created a 10-digit dialing, because most areas of the country are used to dialing 10 digits. And in there, I just have the area code and number, it's NXX and then N and then six X's, which makes a total of 10 digits. The N means uh, digits two through nine, X means digits zero through nine. And so that's kind of how that works. I put the privilege on internal, and you can see I'm adding a one because SIP.us needs to receive 11 digits. We're dialing 10 with this dial pattern, but we're then adding one on without the user doing anything. So they can dial 11 digits, they can dial 10 digits, and they'll get out. This is your three-digit dialing, uh, which is like 911. You can use 933 to test 911 services with us. And this is international calling. So I'm saying in here, uh, most people are used to dialing 011 first to initiate an international call. And then the period is some digit, and then the exclamation point is as many digits as they dial. And so they can... Dial a whole bunch of digits in there, and we're going to strip off the 011 because SIP.us does not need that. As long as you've got those, you should be able to do North American dialing. And if you have international dialing activated, you, that should work for international dialing. You go to your inbound routes and create your inbound route 
Uh, this is, I guess, in default mode, but I did make this route. You can see I have an exclamation point, then N, X, X, N, and then six X's. That's 10 digits. Exclamation point and then 10 digits. Some of our carriers send us a plus and one, and then the area coded number. Some of them send just one and the area coded number. So this covers both circumstances. And, uh, and you can see I'm sending it to my extension 1000. If I go over to my status, you can see that my status is registered and uh, I am good to go. I will give you a couple tips here. Uh, number one, if you go to SIP settings and you go in here to NAT under your PBX thing, if for some reason your private IP address is showing up in your SIP.US control panel, you can set your external IP here and then your local IP network here and then that address will show correct in your SIP.US control panel. And that, if you're showing your internal IP on your SIP.US control panel, it causes a lot of uh, inbound problems because we can't deliver to a an internal address. You need your external address to be showing. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. You, you've got some other options that you can set if you really want to, but for the most part, you're going to leave those alone uh, and, and really not do anything to them. Um, that should get you configured. Your trunk should say registered here and on your SIP.US portal. If not, feel free to open up a ticket with us and tell us what went wrong.